What if I told you that you could get the power of this and the portability of this in this? This is a small form factor PC, and today I'll help you decide if going tiny is the right move for you. This is DIY in 5. Hey everyone, and welcome to DIY in 5, the show where we make tech simple for the everyday user. My name's Trisha Hirschberger, and today I'll help you decide if a small form factor PC could be right for you, and if so, some things to consider as you pick out your new tiny powerhouse. If you find the tips in this video helpful, please feel free to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ding that bell so that you don't miss out on any future tech tips. Choosing what type of PC is right for you can be a tall order. Full-size desktops offer premium performance, but in a large, heavy footprint. Laptops are typically the choice for workstations on the go, but can be held back by battery life and limited upgradability. A small form factor PC, or mini PC, can offer the best of both worlds. Small form factor PCs are tiny, so they free up a lot more desk space. Think two PC streaming setups, and you can quickly see how a mini PC could save a ton of room. You can buy or build a mini PC capable of running the latest games, complete with ray tracing and smooth frame rates. And since upgrading is a part of the small form factor culture, you can get in there and use every nanometer of space available. The other nice thing about small form factor PCs is that you can literally put it in a bag and take it with you. Think LAN parties of old, but much easier on the back. I'm going to a LAN party! Now, you may think the less space you have to work with, especially dealing with higher end components, will be a problem for thermals. But some of the biggest brands in PC gaming offer pre-built small form factor gaming PCs that are both cool and quiet in addition to being tiny and mighty. Just look at Intel's Nook line, which has its own proprietary motherboard configuration to get as tiny as possible. Or Zotac's mini PC line with options specifically designed for creators. There are many great options if you'd like to go the pre-built route or even kits where you can install your own storage and memory, but the rest is pre-configured. For those DIYers out there itching to build a small form factor PC for yourself, there are some considerations. First, it's important to note that there isn't a universally agreed upon definition for what size qualifies as a small form factor PC. A standard size ATX desktop tower is roughly 40 to 45 liters in volume as far as what it can hold, whereas a small form factor PC is generally about half that. This gives you a range of possibilities of size for your case. When choosing components for this type of build, you'll want to keep in mind that the tinier you go, the more judicious you'll need to be about component size, installation, cooling, and cable management. The CPU and GPU deserve the most attention here. CPUs are rather tiny anyway, score. And when it comes to GPU and other components, be sure to check length, width, and height. They all matter. Look for low profile or half length configurations if need be. Anticipate that you may be working with a smaller motherboard as well. If you do find yourself going with a mini ITX or micro ATX sized motherboard, get creative. Let's say your board only has two RAM sockets. You may need to choose higher capacity RAM modules now since you won't be able to add more later. Once you've got components and a motherboard that will fit your size needs, you'll need to think about cooling. Low profile fan CPU coolers are the simplest choice in a tiny build and all-in-one GPU cooling can give you some added flexibility when it comes to both size and noise level. Note that each choice you make when it comes to components may affect your other component choices as well. Consider motherboards or systems that use SO DIMMs. Kingston's Fury Impact DDR4 and DDR5 SO DIMMs are perfect for this, with plug and play automatic overclocking and capacities ranging from eight to 32 gigabytes. And if you are also looking for tiny storage, Kingston makes the low-profile Fury Renegade M.2 NVMe SSD in capacities up to four terabytes with speeds up to 7,300 megabyte per second read and 7,000 megabyte per second write. Now that's fast. Finally, cable management and power. Some mini PC enthusiasts prefer to build using a modular power supply so you can choose exactly which cables you want and leave out those you don't for a cleaner build and custom length cables can be a godsend. You'll want to keep in mind airflow, steering clear of fans, and if you opted for a see-through enclosure, clean look as well. The good news is that small form factor doesn't need to mean compromise. And while this form factor won't be right for everyone, it's cool to see what these mini PCs are capable of, especially as the tech is advancing more and more each day. 
I, for one, do not miss the days of hauling my full-size desktop to LAN parties or those hefty gaming laptops that weighed as much as I do. Have you built or used a small form factor PC? Feel free to weigh in with your thoughts as well, and I will see you next time with more DIY in 5.